Let's take a look at what we are doing tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orzhov Legends. Um, this, this deck is nothing but fun. I, I can't stop playing this deck. I, I need to test more and newer decks. Um, but I keep like obsessively coming back to this one and playing it and having fun and changing stuff up and whatever. Um, and the, the version that you're looking at right now, I actually haven't played this one yet since I've made a couple of changes and stuff. Things like the Wandering Emperor, this is new to the deck. It actually was not in the deck originally. Um, same thing with Annex Century. This just got put into the deck, but I've had a lot of luck with this and Toxic deck so far. I've been super impressed with it. I want to see how it does here. Mostly we built this because Vran. You know, we built it because it's an excuse to play a, to play Elsa Core. She's my fiance. Um, so I really wanted to play this card like I always do. But I feel like with not only Vran, but another new card, Skrell, Defector Might. Um, this card is, this deck is getting playable. Uh, we need more copies of Skrelv, I think. But I don't have any more copies of Skrelv. I would love to have three of this, but I've only got two of it. This makes it to where if you Skrelv on one and they don't kill it or whatever, then you can just Elisal Core or Vron on two and then it is protected from all kinds of stuff. And it makes this enormous difference to actually like make sure you keep a two drop out. Now your opponent might cut down your Skrelv. But that is a removal piece they don't have for your two drop. You know, and, and they might cut down the Skrelv and then Infernal Grasp or something or go for the throw at your two drop. But then, again, they're down two removal spells. And that matters. Skrelv gets you on board on turn one, which this deck really, really wants a lot. And uh, previously we played things like Colt Conscript, which are fine cards. But I think that Skrelv is the card that, or the, the, that this deck was looking for. Even more so than Vron, which, I mean, Vron is obviously <laughs> amazing in <laughs> Aristocrats, but Skrelv, Skrelv is sneakily the best card in this deck because it protects our premier two drops that we cannot live without. Um, Jadar, too. Same, same with Jadar. Protects Jadar. But Jadar is obviously great with both Vron and Ellis, of course, specifically very good with Vron. But it gains us life off Ellis, too, so we want three copies of this. This dude's great. Um, there are a couple of ways you can go. With Elso Core and Vron, you can keep the curve extremely low, which I think is a good a good idea to get on board quickly, play more one drops than we are here, keep the curve much lower than four and five like we have here. Um, I, I think that there is an argument for that deck. Mm. However, <laughs> and also that deck would very likely play a lot of aristocracy like sacrifice stuff. You might play Flesh Taker or something else that you can like for free or very cheaply sacrifice creatures to get your trigger train going, you know, but we're not really doing that in this deck. We do not have a whole lot of things to sacrifice to. We have a uh, Rite of Oblivion and that's more or less it. We were running a copy of Braids, but I cut that card. Uh, you may see Annex Sentry instead now. Um, I wanted another removal spell, but we may go back to Braids and you can play the deck with Braids and see how you like it. But we're not really, we don't want to come down on, on board presence unless we have to. We want to create a War of Attrition and then dog our opponent out in that War of Attrition because that's where we're comfortable. And I like that design in the current standard, which is a little slower, a little grindier some of the time, depending on what matchups you get. So, you know, you might get soldiers, you might get mono red, but even those matches, you'd be surprised, especially if you go first, you can draw those out pretty well. So as far as the removal in the deck, I've been liking, you know, cut down Infernal Grasp, Rite of Oblivion, Annex, Sentry. I haven't played with Sentry yet, but that is eight solid removal spells, plus Faithful Absence is nine, so... We do okay on that front. Lauren of the Third Path can also remove things. That's very important. Um, combos with Shieldred somewhat because we can, you know, everybody draws cards. So that's kind of fun. Um, welcoming Vampire, just a one up. This was originally Morbid Opportunist. That card actually felt kind of bad. Again, we're not doing these like aristocrat shenanigans where our creatures die every turn and stuff. Or we just like get big strings of creatures dying, which Morbid Opportunist isn't even good during because it only triggers once per turn. Welcoming Vampire, much better. You know, a lot of our legends are relatively small um, on the two power end. Plus Wedding Announcement, Annex Sentry, Lauren, right? So um, very easy to trigger this card. Easier than Morbid Opportunist a lot of the time. And it's also a must kill for the opponent. Adeline doesn't necessarily need to be in here, but this does generate like little nerds and dorks that we don't care about dying, which is something the deck values. And it tends to be the biggest creature in the deck eventually. So pretty good. Puts a lot of pressure on the opponent if we do get it turn three. It also combos really well with Vron. Just a, it's a fine card. I wouldn't cut it. 
but you could. <laughs> Wandering Emperor is new to the deck as well. This is, again, more removal spells. This actually gives us a solid 11 removal spells. Plus, again, something that creates dorks that isn't embarrassing. You know, like Wedding Announcement. That's the thing that can get our aristocrats playing going and make like these little nerdy dudes that we don't mind if they block and die. We want that. Um, our opponent doesn't. So they sometimes don't attack, but then we just keep getting more dudes off of wedding announcement and it just makes the situation worse for them. Um, one of the Emperor is kind of similar. You know, we can put it down, blow up a dude, and then make a dude. Um, that again, we do not mind attacking in or dying or whatever, or blocking. So that's, this is, again, just a creature factory that's not embarrassing. It's actually one of the best cards in Standard. But this color combination allows us to run Wandering Emperor and Shouldred, so why not do that? <laughs> Shelly's great. <laughs> best card in Standard and all that. But I'm making room for Edgar here. <clears throat> a couple of reasons I'm doing that. Um, not a ton of Exile in the current Standard. There's some Exile, but not a ton. So Edgar tends to be okay. This, again, makes nerds. It makes little dudes that we don't mind dying and stuff. They have lifelink. That's good in some matchups. Um, Edgar eventually comes back as a 4-4. That's obviously good. Um, and yeah, <laughs> last thing though, that I think is kind of neat is that, um, where are you? <laughs> Welcoming vampire is obviously a vampire, right? And then, um, Vron, Vron is a vampire. This is a Phyrexian vampire. So <laughs> there's a few things in this deck that Edgar actually boosts beyond just the tokens. And it can be neat. You know, you put Vron out of like cut down range if you throw down a Edgar. So that's, you know, it can be relevant. Um, and then Retadrabic is really, it, it's it's like the rug, you know, it really pulls, it brings the room together. <laughs> because Retadrabic, you know, if if our Vron dies, it comes back. If our Ellis dies, it comes back. Shieldred dies, comes back. Edgar dies, comes back. That's kind of not, that's a little bit of a non-bow. <laughs> Actually, it's not a non-bow uh, because I forgot. Yeah, Rat Retadrabic is worded in such a way that it doesn't remove the creature from the game or anything like that. <laughs> Just whenever it dies, put it in the yard and create a token copy of it. Um, so yeah, Edgar will go to the yard, come back. You'll still have another copy of it. That copy will boost the um, vampires that you get from the coffin. So that's pretty sick. Pretty sick. Um, so this deck has been great. You may have seen the screenshot I shared on Twitter the other day where it was like, all my, all my rowdy friends are coming over tonight. We got a pig in the ground. We got the beer on ice and Skrelv, Jadar. Actually, I think the screenshot was Skrell, Vren, Elisil Kor, um, Shildred, and Retadrabic, <laughs> all on the same table. If we can achieve a board state like that, we're doing okay. And I've been able to do stuff like that more times than you might think. Aside from that, I think the deck might need some a little tweaking in the land base, but it's been working mostly fine for me. Just basic variance has been screwing me from time to time. Uh, and I have not played a game of Drivnod. Uh, I just added this card. Literally on stream, so <laughs> I just got one copy of it. We'll give it a shot. We'll see how it works, but I'm not, like, super convinced, but we'll see. We'll see about it. We go first. That's a good sign. Vron on two. Wedding announcement on three. That's okay. All right, sure. <laughs> Let's sanctum on one. I got a... Okay. Yeah, that's probably a decent volume. Rod Priest. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I actually haven't played against this deck that much. Surprisingly, especially um, after the first day, I feel like this deck, um, oh my god, Rot Priest 2, I feel like this deck went down a lot in uh, popularity. Here comes Wedding Announcement, no tax, the question is do we block with the Vran? Vran? <laughs> I guess we can blow up one of these Rot Priests next turn, or can we? Well, we get an Annex Sentry. That at least forces him to use a spell this turn. We could also shield it, which is probably just good, you know. What happens if I send this token? This is just for science, kind of, you know. <laughs> they are going to block it. Hmm. 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 <laughs> I don't... We could get blown out by Shore Up. We get super blown out by Shore Up. Tie Bar Stan. So, I kind of don't love it. I'd rather save it. We'll uh, do two to the opponent here. We'll get a token back anyway. The question is, do I save for Shieldred or, sh or do I play Shieldred now or save for Wandering Emperor? Shelly. We don't have any poison counters yet, but that can change like super fast. All I have to do is cast like two spells and we lose the game. 
So <laughs> let's, let's be very careful. Man, our first game, we get Rob Priest, Rob Priest. Okay, so they don't do anything EOT, they just show up. Cycle Spars headquarters. Protection spells. They got a handful of protection spells. They don't want to just like waste EOT, you know? So I think we're doing the right thing. I think we made the right decisions there. Alright, they draw for turn. They had something they could have done. I wonder if it's Fading Hope or March. I wonder if it's March. But this is where they're going to want to start putting counters on us. So hopefully they spend enough mana to where we can, you know, <laughs> actually kill one of their Rob Priests. But uh, even targeting a Rob Priest is going to put a bunch of counters. Yeah, Tyvar stand main phase. They put two counters on us. Okay. Cool. Now what? <laughs> Nothing. All right. Hmm. Bait. That seems like bait. <laughs> a little bit, right? We have two counters, so if they have Bring the Ending, we can still resolve a spell if we cast this Taki. Seems okay. There's a couple ways to handle this. I could send dudes in and then Wandering Emperor if need be. It's a thing to do. I think I might actually attack with Shieldred. <laughs> I might do that, man. So if I Annex Entry now, it might actually end up giving us some information. I could also just Drivnod, try to race them. I never get to resolve Drivnod. <laughs> I'm gonna try it. <laughs> so now, what if I attack with the Shieldred? <laughs> what if I do that? Then what happens? Tyvar's stand doesn't kill our Shelly. Shore up doesn't kill our Shelly. So, sure. I don't want to draw a card off the announcement. I want to get the token. I guess if our Shelly does die, that's good. <laughs> it's good for us. It's a weird board statement. You could argue that I should have used this removal by now. But I, I'm testing something here. <laughs> just don't mind me. I'm just doing stuff. <laughs> Alright, opponent's got ideas. They just take it. They go to 10. We get a toke. They have to, like, kill us. They have to kill us, <laughs> but they could. They they totally could. They have four dudes in their hand. They're gonna march our guys. Yep, they march all of our dudes. So six, seven, eight. They have a single spell they can target um, a venerated rob priest with. We lose. So sucks. <laughs> Yeah, good game, opponent, March. Ah, they only had a couple cards left, but... I think that was... So, if we had tried to remove their guy, they definitely would have March of Swirling Misted. They definitely would have done that. And... They may not have even needed to get in for combat damage to win there. Maybe not. Another argument you could make is that if we force them to use the march, they don't have it to remove our guys here. But I don't know how much they need to remove our guys. You know? Plus, if they'd have used the march protecting rot priests, then we would have more poison counters that way, too. So, yeah, it's hard to beat double rot priests, even if you have removal. But you could argue I play that one different and things shake out differently. But I still think playing Annex Sentry or something is. Just a waste of mana when we could be, I don't know, enacting our plan and trying to race them that way. We got them to eight. If we had had one more turn, we'd have won, but that's standard, you know? All right, we go first here. Really would like to have a Skrelv in this opener, but it is what it is. We do have two Illus. But opponent starts on red mana, so we won't have these Illus for very long. We get a third? Ugh. It's not a great draw. It really isn't. But we're, we might need them. I mean, they're just gonna play with fire. The Dallas C. Yep. They always have it. They never don't have it. Second red man. I gotta say, opponent is on um, Mirage <laughs> Mountains. <laughs> I got no problem with that. Let's vamp. This will probably draw out a removal spell too. I wonder if our opponent's on Big Red. Yep. Lightning Strike. Yep. Yep. But next turn, we get to 
gut check them on something really important, which is, you know, you're mono red, can you kill Shieldred? We get a Vron to go with our LSO core, that's pretty sick. <laughs> Let's play Shelly. The test. Canst thou do it? Himoj. Take your two. Alright, let's see if they have Rending Flame or... Koth won't do it this turn, but it will soon. But if they play Koth right now, we can just attack into it. So that feels good. We have a couple of ways of gaining life, which should also really help in this match. They're going to Reckless Storm Seeker. That's a 3-4. You going to come in? Coming in? You going to do it? <laughs> no, they don't. So no play with fire in their hand, at least. Though in the festivities? Either, yeah, because they could have done that. All right, Lauren can blow this Kimano up, but it can do that next turn, too, and it'll be fine. I just kind of want to... We know they don't have play with fire or something. They probably would have attacked there, so... Oh, I, I did this in the wrong order. <laughs> I'm supposed to Ellis first to gain a life off of Vran. Sorry for being boneheaded. I should probably also... Well, I'm not going to attack with Shelly. Well, I could. I could. I'm not going to. <laughs> so again, we know they don't have... Well, it's not, we don't know they don't have play with fire, but it's super unlikely they do. I feel like a lot of opponents, even if they didn't have it, would like bluff there. Alright, so look at our dudes. <laughs> Man, that one life better not be the difference from <laughs> missequencing these cards. And I really should know that by now because I played LSO Core in like 400 games of Magic at least. <laughs> Probably more, honestly. <laughs> oh, they're in the lock. They're in the soft lock. All right, they had a play with fire. Maybe they drew it. Maybe they didn't. But they kill our Ellis with the play with fire. We got to get rid of the Setchings. <laughs> but we can with the Lauren. It's fine. It becomes Fable. We get a Gabo. You gonna haste it? Opponents tapped out, so we get free blocks if they come in. Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. So you have spent two play with fires this game. You spent two of them. None blocks. It's just not worth it. It really isn't worth it to test that. They still have two cards. They could easily have a third play with fire. We draw Retadrovic. <laughs> Let's go, man. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll lure him this turn and kill the etching. <laughs> so want to get in with this Shelly. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> it's a bad idea. So opponent goes to 14, where 20 children is slowly killing them. <laughs> I assume they have an answer to it somewhere in there. If they throw down Koth this turn and a mountain, they can they can kill Shelly. But if they don't kill Shelly this turn, we can Retadrovic next turn, and that's just going to be super sexy. Uh, if our Lauren ever dies, we can kill their um, Reflection, so that's also good. They're sussing it out here. They have three cards left, five mana on the table, a total of six potentially if they attack. But no... They do pop their treasure for some reason. What are you doing? Shivan Devastator? No, here comes Koth. Okay, cool. Cool. Play a mountain, kill the Shelly. No, they're gonna minus three the Shelly and then strangle. Okay. That also worked. Sucks. We didn't get a Retadrovic down. We should maybe we should have just played it last turn. My thought process was do we play Retadrovic now, or do we play Lauren now, kill that thing? Because uh, we can kill the Reflection and the Etchings both ways. We can do it both ways. Um, you know, we, we play Retadrovic, and then we play Lauren, and then Lauren dies, and we kill the other enchantment. Those are potential things. <laughs> but now we have to deal with Koth, which I've already said tonight, and I mean it, is a re very good card. That card is really, really good. Yeah. We gotta do it. There's gonna be a problem though. This 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 may come down. We're top decking, you know. Oh, they blocked the Lauren. That's so good. That's so great. I wasn't sure they were going to, but this is gonna work out nicely. So we get both of our guys back. Lauren comes down and kills their reflection. 
but we're in a bit of a tough spot here when it comes to killing this Koth next turn. Especially if they can play a body. They very likely can. They get two cards. They can play a body or remove a guy, and they're definitely going to do one of those two things. They are at 10, though, which is a fairly low life total. Ritadrabic they're looking at. They're going to braid it. Have to pay the ward. So they go to 8. They're not going to swing, I assume. Here comes cut down. That's not amazing. And let's attack our opponent. That's right. That's right. I think we might lose by a hair here. I mean a tiny, tiny hair. They blocked the Vran. I should have only... Man, I probably should have only attacked with Lauren. But then why even attack at all, you know? We go to five after the Ellis trigger. That Koth, dude. That Koth. We called it, too. We knew the Koth was coming. Still things we can draw. Um, Shouldred would be fantastic, but it would die to the Koth. Do you have another removal spell? Unless they just want to cough something, but they probably wouldn't do that. It would kill cough. They have another cough. Another, okay. One of the cards in their hand is another cough. That's what's happening here. Mirrodin, lend me your flame. Here comes Kumano. Kumano faces Kakazan. We go to 25. Do they not have another cough? They really just wanted that Ellis off the table. Huh. Do we each draw a card here? Do we each draw a card here? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it's an Infernal Grass. It's pretty good. Let's cast that. Cast that all on the floor. Cast that. Draw a wedding announcement. That is so sick right now. Let's get in with the Lauren. Has vigilance anyway. It's a wedding announcement. Okay. I gotta cut down to protect us. We guys gotta get these last few points in, guys. Cut down could be used there. Seeker was a 3 2. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> like, just because the card says 3 2 doesn't mean it's actually a. I don't, I don't think cut down works that way. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to use it. I probably shouldn't do this right here. Because, like, the creature still has X amount of toughness. Right? It doesn't not have that much toughness. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, just an arena visual. Don't think it would work there. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, we can't cut down the bloodthirsty adversary. That sucks. That sucks. We draw land. I knew we would. We've drawn land twice in a row. That is that is hurtful. It is so hurtful. <laughs> Alright, let's get another token from the wedding announcement. That cough, dude. That cough. We have got to finish. We have got to finish, man. We finally have a creature we can cut down. It's nice. Could draw the other Shelly. There's a million bad cards we could draw here, though. We could draw Ratadabric, which isn't great. Felden comes down. Jeez Louise, man. I'm gonna kill the etching. Probably wasn't the right time to do that. Still have a card in their hand in mana. <laughs> But etching is a card I want off the table because it invalidates, like, a bunch of our draws. Here comes Shelly. They can kill it with the Koth. They still have to take some damage to it, though. God, we're close here. I'm going to bluff with this land. Draw a card if we attack. That's silly, though. We want the body. 5-6 Shelly. Still dies. Still dies to the Koth. But they have to murder their own cough to kill the Shelly here. And they also have to play a creature or remove a guy to not die. So, oh my goodness. Let me get a Drivnod. Why not just play that? <laughs> sure, <laughs> I'm just gonna play it. <laughs> Swing. Swung. Swung. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, good game opponent. That was a great game. Jeez, dude. Do you see how crazy? Yeah, Felden can't block. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Felden cannot block. But one way or the other, dude, just what a good game. Did you see how good Koth is, man? Koth is so good. Koth is so good. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, jeez. Jeez. Macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I knew we were going to have to beat that card, and we somehow did, man. Drawing Shelly was instrumental. We needed to do that. Great. Look at this curve if we draw untapped black source. But we have two shots at it. We got two shots, guys. Let's hope it happens. If it doesn't, that's just painful. It's super painful. <laughs> we'll see, man. Come on, deck. Opponent takes a mulligan. Wonder if that means they're mono red. Nope, they are blue red. Doesn't give us doesn't give us the mana. I will still scrub on one though. I think it's worth getting on board. Come on, come on, deck. Come on. I'm counting on you, bud. Counting on you. It's Grixis. Was the case that they gave me. They abraid the scrub. They are. They know enough to be afraid of that card. We get another one, so that's cute. Let's just throw down Shattered Sanctum and play that. Nice. <laughs> Backs up our curve by a turn, which is false, but still could work. Corpse Praiser. Nice. They draw the card. Get rid of our Skrelv in the yard. Get rid of their Skrelv in the yard. And then we draw a card. What's it going to be? We're looking at three. And then bars. All right. So they put. Wow. One of those cards was better than Invoke Despair or Go for the Throat. <laughs> What did you get? A Shieldred. They're playing Shieldred next turn, aren't they? We have to find a way to deal with that. <laughs> they're doing it, too. It's like guaranteed. That's what they're doing. Alright. Third land. Vran? Sure. Backing up our curve sucks, dude. Backing up our curve by turn sucks so hard. It's like they got to go first, kind of. They did. It's like they get to go first twice. <laughs> they double went first. Like backing up our curve. All we needed was a black source stack. That is it. <laughs> you little jerk. Still could be a really good game here, though. Pass it over, huh? Okay. Black source is the draw. We finally got it. I feel like we haven't seen a Mirage Swamp. <laughs> Majority of the night. All right, so we got options. We got so many options. I think we Ellis. We could also announce it, <laughs> which is pretty good. I don't know. I want to show him the Ellis. Thing. It's almost always better to go ahead and get announcements started, but this way, if they okay, they abrade the Skrelv. I guess. We, well, yeah, yeah. I guess we might as well protect the Vron from black. And let that Abrade resolve. Other than that, we're just casting Cut Down. Um, a reason to cast Ellis instead of Wedding Announcement this turn is they may have Make Disappear. They had the mana for it. Let's so. pop in with Vron. Because it can't be blocked this turn. Put him at 15. They get a Poison. I just forget. <laughs> Huh. Does Fron have toxic? <laughs> Why did they get a Oh yeah, because okay, cause Skrelf, cause Skrelf. It just took me a second, I'm sorry. <laughs> took me a second. Let's see if they pass turn here. We just cut down yeah, cut down the harvester. Oh, it's stuck on mana, which is great news. We're getting a lot of it, though, which is like not the best news. <laughs> Let's announce it and start getting set up here, but... Shieldred still just kind of beats us. Yeah, throw down caves, sure. We also don't have a whole lot that I really want to use the Lauren on against this deck that I can think of. Like, Reckoner Bankbuster is an idea. Alright, 
They sack their blood. They discard Shelly. They've got two. They just, they need a land and there it is. Okay. We still haven't drawn the Infernal Grasp or Faithful Absence for Shelly. Um, I'll even take an Annex Sentry or something. But they play Buster. They play Buster Douglas. Why did you drop that children? Well, we drew the removal for it, so that's good news. Let's play Lauren. Lauren Hill. Hmm. Huh. Now, uh, hmm. If I kill the Corpse Appraiser, I can get in this turn. They abrade the Vran. They abrade the Vran. That's fine. That's fine. So they go to 14. We get Lauren. Kill the Buster before they can draw a card. And Sega. I think we Sega here. Alright, so Invitation goes off. We go to 25 from the Ellis. We're rocking and rolling, but that could change any second. They Fable. They only have one more card in their hand. It's interesting. All of this is so interesting. <laughs> Alright. They only have one card in their hand, man. That's it, you know? Sure. Oh, we draw land, dude. Why are you always drawing land? <laughs> you, you gotta stop that. <laughs> One, two, three, six. Six out of 14 is... It could be worse. Pass turn. We can't be passing turn against Grixis like this. We that's It's not good. But announcement just went off, so now our dudes are big enough to attack, sort of. Bankbuster 2. Second one of the game. I'm going to be drawing a lot of cards. But I guess we've mostly kept him from doing that. Although, no, I don't think they pitched anything to Reflection or Fable this turn. So that other card in their hand is good. I'm going to attempt to Faithful Absence this Corpse Appraiser. They can't make disappear no matter what they do. They probably want to use this mana that they have open to draw a card off Buster. We get a second land in a row. Deck, come on, man. Come on, Deck. What are you doing? I'm just going to spank in. Because, you know, they're roped right now. They go for the throat, the Ellis. Little jerk. <laughs> that was the last card in their hand, though. That's good. And then they can block the Lauren. That leaves them with nothing but a Reflection and a Bank Buster. I mean, those are good cards. Let's bluff with this land, because that's we're just going to keep drawing those, I guess. The land, Drawing lands has been a heartbreaker tonight. Like Every time we need to draw something, we just draw land. They draw off Buster. Land. Corpse Appraiser. Jeez, just m cards, cards, cards. We need that. They get rid of something. <laughs> they really don't like Skrull. <laughs> They threw two lands in the yard and got a, an actual magic card. <laughs> Ooh, a Dribnod. I mean, it's just a giant dude. <laughs> it's fine. Opponent at eight. <laughs> I'm banging in, dude. <laughs> let's, let's try it. Block with Appraiser. Wait. Hmm. We can, we can give Dribnot an indestructible counter. That's neat. That's neat. <laughs> Might actually be incredibly relevant. <laughs> they draw... Ooh, they tap their buster to draw a card. That could have blocked Dribnod. Here comes Appraiser. Okay. Alright. Ooh, it's a tough one against Grixis. Alright, so how many creatures in her yard after that? Two, so we have to put the indestructible counter on him now. Okay. We gotta do that. Bing, bong, boom. Submit three. Yeah. Yeah, what now? <laughs> Dog, I don't know. We have got to draw a real magic card. We did draw Drivnod. There's Shelly. Here's Shelly. Alright, so. Let's pop in. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we have to. Bang! 
Lose our indestructible counter. We can't get another one. But we have a 5-6 Shieldred, and they have one card in their hand. They, they're going to have three because they get to draw off Bank Buster. They can have a fourth, too. They have a lot of looks at it here because they have a clue token. But, you know, the more stuff they draw, <laughs> the worse. So, two shoulder triggers. They will go to two here. They have done so. If they want to draw off the clue, they're screwed. Here comes Corpse Appraiser. That doesn't technically draw, so could save them. Looking for a removal spell in the top three. Come on, opponent. Come on, opponent. Really good game of magic cards here. Gotta hand it to Grixis, you know. Oh, you don't lose the counter. Yeah, it's not a shield counter. Yep. <laughs> but they're just gonna get boys, aren't they? Jeez. <laughs> Yikes. It's a lot of men. <laughs> yeah, it's not a shield counter, just an indestructible counter. We draw lands. I can't complain, though. I really can't. That's great, dude. <laughs> it's the whole counter. All right, let's just come in with Dr Drivnod here. They'll just block with the 1-1, one, one, yeah. Hey, good game, us. Good game, opponent. They apparently don't have the removal. We will reveal that our last card is Mirage Swamp. The King of Swamps. They cut down our 2-2. Two, two. And I will tip my cup to Grixis. Oh, we did it, guys. So if you need some proof of concept for this deck at all, I hope that does it. Um... I think there was probably even a misplay or two for, on my part in that game. Um, at least one, but I can't remember what it was now. <laughs> but there's likely a misplay in that game because, you know, it's me playing Magic. Um, but again, decent proof of concept. We grinded it out against Grixis. They got a lot of good cards. I don't know why. I have no clue why they pitched this Shieldred early in the game. But right after they pitched, the turn after we pitched it, we drew Fateful Absence. So that wouldn't have been too much of a problem. We would have been at we would have ended the game at twenty four or something, <laughs> you know. But yeah, we grinded it out against Grixis, and that's something you really need to be able to do in this format. So, hey, hey, I'm just saying. Let's see what's up against Dave Sid here <laughs> in this one. All right, so yeah, turn one, Shattered Sanctum. Could have played the scroll of that time if we'd had it. Bilious Skull Dweller? I like to see it. I do. Caves of Koilos. Okay, so... Have we learned anything from the last game we played? Where they just, like, played Fight Spell with their Skull Dweller on turn two? I don't know. I kind of still want to run here. Nah, we, we've got it set up to where we can Jadar here, and then next turn... We play a Ron Cutdown, and that should be fun. I think that's better. Okay, blue black. Here comes Void Wing. Skull Dweller is gonna come in. No blocks. Gonna get a Toxic. That's fine. Ratadrabic is our draw. Right, so Vron, you come on down. And then, yeah, we cut down the Skull Dweller. They give us a nice. <laughs> We swing in with the just the Zombo. And then we can eventually ride up Oblivion the Void Wing away, and that's going to be way better. If they have untapped mana, we have to watch out for Bring the Ending. Yep, Skull Dweller. Maybe nothing else. Oh, another Void Wing. Wow, good stuff. Alright, so they swing with Wings. We get another Ratadabri. We don't have the mana to play it, though. So let's ride up Oblivion. The untapped one away. That'll exile. We need that. <laughs> oh my god, we need that. We also need to not die to toxic damage, though. Also, next turn, our opponent, like, almost definitely has. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Next turn, our opponent. I was going to say something there, and I almost lost. Oh, our opponent's going to get um, at least three poison counters on us. So some of their spells just get better. No blocks, though. No blocks. Four poison counters. Yep, Distorted Curiosity. They're out of blue mana for now, though. They haven't played a land yet. Blight Belly Rat comes down. LSL Core is the draw. The draw. Good 
<laughs> they give us a nice. <laughs> Thanks. We'll even say it. Alright, so they proliferate because they block with Blight Belly. We go up to five poison counters. And they go to 11. We get our token from Jadar. Distorted Curiosity again. There is trouble brewing. They're gonna kill Jadar with Anoint. Anoint's really good here, by the way. There's Infernal Grasp. That's a pretty fine draw. Attack the hybrid with the... Well, attack the hybrid. Yeah, kill the hybrid with the Infernal Grasp. Come in with Token. And put him at 9-6. Okay, so... They're at 6. We have 6 poison. Uh, they, God, Anoint with Affliction. The Vron, these exile spells, man. And a third distorted curiosity opponent is going off. Jeez. All right, no attacks. We still don't draw the land. Here comes wedding announcement. We need this land, like, so bad. Another nice. I'm going to mute the opponent because they just nice every play that we make. That could be very nice of them, but it's, you know, it's enough at this point. <laughs> Blight Belly. We get a Shelly. Oh my god. But we can't play. Where is our fourth mana? Oh my goodness. What is happening? No tax. Ay, goodness, dude. Arena. Arena. It's trying to get us, dude. I know what this is. I know what this is, Arena. Give us the fourth mana. We'd have won this game if we had a fourth mana by now. Thrumming bird. Yep, it flies. Here come the boys. Definitely block Skull Dweller. 100%. Yeah, we'll block the rat. Well, will we? We got an eight. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they Braskas fall us right here. So they go to four. We draw the land. Oh my god. Oh my god, Shelly. Help. <laughs> They're going to bring the ending. I knew it, too. I knew as soon as we got the fourth mana. Oh, no. Pop in. They don't block. They go to two. We get a boy. Here comes Bilious Skull Dweller. That kind of sucks, actually. We got eight poison counters here off Thrumming Bird damage. They proliferated so they get their hybrid back. Come on, man. Now here come the lands. Of course, of course, dude. Of course. Of course. We are dead. We're dead. We're dead. Oh, no. But they scoop. But they scoop. However, they scoop. What? All right. So we view Battlefield here. We ride of oblivion. We can sacrifice our wedding announcement and kill the Void Wing. We can exile the Void Wing. And then they have to block with these two guys. So we're not dead. We're not technically dead. Um, that is our only line to not die. But <clears throat> what are these cards in their hand? What are these cards in their hand? So we ride of Oblivion. Sacrifice the Wedding. Kill this. They have to block here with both guys. They only have Thrumming Bird left. But next turn we die. <laughs> next turn we just definitely die unless we draw specifically Shieldred and almost no other card in our deck. So, I, man, I don't understand. <laughs> I do not understand why they scooped. But I, they had, I guess they had a reason, man. Maybe they saw something we didn't see there. That one came down to the wire, dude. Yeah, they kill us on crackback. I don't get why they scoop either. They don't kill us on crackback necessarily. They don't know that, though. Well, they do. They know we have Rite of Oblivion. They know we have a permanent attack to it. So, I don't know, man. Oh, well, maybe... Okay, so here's here was the line. Here was the line. We missed it. We missed the line. The line is um, you attack, right? You attack with both guys. Um, I don't know, though. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Yeah, okay, so the line is, that still doesn't work. We can put him at, like, one. I was thinking you attack with the token, it dies, and then you sacrifice, like, Elisal Core, 
and it dies, and you put him at zero, but I don't think Elso Core triggers. I don't think Elso Core triggers when it dies. Yeah, yeah, Elso Core is another. I just had to read it. I had a copy over there. Yeah, Elso Core is another creature dies, so. I don't know, man. All right, let's go first. Sergeant Pepper. We played against Sergeant Pepper before. Sergeant Pepper! Ellis Triggers had him dead no matter what, but like, no. Because they had two blockers. So they block both guys. They can only kill one of, uh, you know, they kill, um, they kill the token and they take a damage. But that's it. They don't have to, I don't think they had to take more than one damage that turn. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's run. Sure. Get it down. I could have also Infernal Grasped, and I think you could argue that that was the correct play <laughs> to Infernal Grasp there. Let's see if they spend some mana. Five cards in their hand. They didn't flip Delver, and they don't do anything. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to try something funny. I'm going to see if they make a move here. They don't. Okay. Set a stop on upkeep. And Infernal Grasp. This could really hurt us if they shore up. They spell pierce. It's okay. Specifically worried that Shore Up would end up dealing, you know, a total of four damage to us. They got Fading Hope. Tempo, man. Tempo. Tempo! Now that's a thinking person's control deck. Tempo? And I mean that, seriously. Tempo is very... Very thought-intensive a lot of the time. In, like, how you spend your mana. Because you're going to spend all your mana most turns with Tempo. And you're going to counter spells. You want to counter spells and be a thinking person? That tempo is the way to go. Alright, sure up, but we still get a permanent on the table. They were hoping... That's actually really good that we did that. They were hoping to block Vron if we tried to get in. Haughty Jin is the play. Still have Fading Hope over there. But they know they don't need to use it yet. Let's try for it. I mean, I know we're going to resolve it, but they're just going to Fading Hope it, EOT. That's fine, though. They don't get a Scry. Um, and they're running very low on cards in their hand. So. But they probably are going to just get to race us on damage. And that sucks. A lot of racing tonight. That we're not winning, by the way. But racing is the worst for us. We really want to get in a War of Attrition. These flying creatures, not what we want. we got to draw removal in these cases. And, you know... The one removal spell we had didn't work, so it's just the kind of thing that'll happen. We could still draw cut down. There's Teleri and Terror. Good lord, man. It's all the good cards in their deck. Shildred, Jadar, but it's too late at this point. It's game. Good game. We just did not have the time. Oh, against Mono Blue, we didn't have time to develop our board. And that's because, you know, they got... Delver into Haughty Jin into Talarian Terror, and we're able to protect their states on key turns. So that's what Mono Blue does. You can't fault them. You can. Note, note, by the way, note that, like, oh, hey, thanks for the raid, man. Thanks for the raid, Pizza. 31 people. Appreciate that. I really do. Honest Don, thanks for the follow. Thanks for the bit as well. <laughs> See if I've read a junior. Thanks for the follow. Dude, raid. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> raid. Pizza. Thanks for the raid, dude. You're amazing. Pizza's cool, dude. Follow Hollywood Pizza. I like them. Opponent goes... Ugh. Hand could be better. He really could. But note, note that against, like, Mono Blue, I don't go off on, like, a wild tangent about, like, control this and control that. Um, I don't. Because it's it's actually a, a, a deck where you have to, like, make real decisions. <laughs> Whereas, like, Blue-White control is not. <laughs> so... Let's try to Vron here. Um, actually, no. Let's scroll. Let's scroll. 
Let's do that. If this gets countered, I'm kind of cool. Yep, yep. Bring the ending. So now we know it's blue, black, up uh, poison. We know for a fit. See if they play a dude. Nope. Maybe it's the uh, all spells one that only plays like the 2-1 the flyer. No lands, guys. We didn't draw the third land. Not like this. <laughs> At least let us play magic, dude. I came here because I wanted to play magic. But that means playing the game with the absolute worst resource management system in the history of gaming. So sometimes it's just going to happen, you know. All right, let's try and resolve Adeline. I think that's correct. I could wedding announcement first, but I think I want the value on board from wedding announcement. I think it's more important. Adeline puts a lot of value on board too, dog. <laughs> you know? That's actually really tough. Let me know what you guys would do here, but I'm going to go ahead and play Adeline. Yeah. You could also attack first with Vron. That's the thing you could do. <laughs> See if they spend mana. But they let the Adeline onto the table. Hmm. Yeah, annoying. Yeah, they wanted to spend... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they wanted to spend that annoying on um, Adeline. Actually, that's a curious one, too. If we'd attacked with Vron first, they probably would have used Anoint on it. And then we'd have Adeline instead, which probably better, you know? It's like better at attacking and stuff. Alright, so they have mana open. There's no guarantee we, we resolve anything this turn. But you guys think we should make him have it? They already had one bring the ending. They already had one. Although maybe the better call here this turn is wedding announcement cut down. Yeah, we cut down here, we almost certainly resolve it. Unless they have reject imperfection. Nope. Yeah, let's announce it. It's just better with Vron, right? If we can actually resolve the card. But if we can't... Okay, let's bring the ending. That's fine. Bang. We put him at 14. We have four cards in their hand still. It's a lot. Experimental Augury. Three mana left after this. That's also... It's still a lot, you know? We can do a lot with that. Void Wing comes back. Let's see if they just get it back. Yeah. Only one mana left here, so... They must have Spell Pierce to counter Emperor. Let's get Red Adrabic in place. The thing is, against Toxic, we don't have all this time to be just, like, screwing around, you know? Like, this, this turn they're going to put a third Poison on us. Unless they don't want to attack. If they want to kill this Red Adabric, yeah, that's all their mana, pretty much. But that's probably worth it to them. <gasps> I don't have three poison counters, my guy. My guy, you have to attack first. I don't have three poison counters. Anoint doesn't kill four drops unless I have three poison counters. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Now I have three. Now I do. Mmm, that misplay by the opponent. That feels bad. They still have enough for curiosity, though. God, that would have been such a good turn for them. Like, I kind of feel bad a little, because that would have been really good. Well, let's resolve this Shelly, because we're guaranteed to. And I guess that probably wins the game. I mean, maybe they can Toxic us out from here. They have a bunch of mana. And enough cards, too, so. We go up to four from the attack if they attack. So that means they have to put, like, six counters on us. They anoint the... Now they have three. They have a billion of these, don't they? Jeez, yeah, three Anoint with Afflictions, this game, god, dude. Calm down with that. That's stupid. <laughs> That's really stupid. <laughs> they drew three Anoints. So dumb. They don't attack with Voidwing. We get land, that means Drivnod. Right? They have Reject Imperfection up. And they have it too, don't they? They have it. Either that or bring it. could be bring the ending. Whatever. I bet they counter the NX entry. I bet they do, dude. These cards are really good. Like these cards are so good. I want to make sure we land them, but there's just no there's no guarantee that we do. Ever, you know? But I at least want to try. Let's annex entry. It takes our whole turn, but I still think it, we're gonna get it's gonna get countered. If it doesn't, awesome, you know. Yeah, 
that. Bring the ending. They selected that, though. Although, like, if you have... Oh, do you have the minus one, minus one proliferate? It doesn't matter because you can't target him. Um, hmm. They do block with Void Wing and say go. All right. All right. What up then, Prey Geyser? Four cards in your hand is still a lot, but we only have three poison. They can easily proliferate that. I guarantee that's they that's on their docket this turn. Seven mana. So you can make a sack of guy, maybe. Nebraska's fall, you know. Or they're just they really want to kill this ratty. The mesmerizing dose. Okay. That's a th th card to play. Alright. Hmm. Neat. Alright, so they bring back the void wing. They just don't want us attacking. They really don't want us attacking. But that's all their mana. That is all of it. Oh, we can't. We don't have enough white mana to Wandering Emperor and Skrelv. That's poor. That's, that's, that's pee poor. That really is. That's so dumb. That's so stupid. So stupid. How many creatures in our yard? Two. All right. Let's just driv. No attacks for now. For now. Indestructible counters don't really matter either because they just have Anoint with Affliction, but they've already used three of the four copies of it in their deck. Same thing with Curiosity. Is a third Distorted Curiosity? My guy. <laughs> I guess they haven't drawn a Vraska yet, which is sexy. There's an another Mesmerizing Dose. That one's actually really good. <laughs> that's, that's great. We need a lore of the third path to bust one of these up. There's Experimental Augury. Okay. We have six poison now. We could have seven EOT. <clears throat> so they're really holding us off, guys. There's another Vron. That's actually cool. It's actually pretty cool. We can't Emperor, though. Let's try and Skrelv. That'll bait them. They have another Bring the Inning. If they just have three of every good card in their deck to start, I'm just going to be so upset. <laughs> Alright, let's play this Ron. I'm doing this for a reason, by the way. And then we keep this Ron. Yeah. Alright, so they go to seven. Shouldn't it have triggered an additional time? Were they. I thought they were at nine. So if that ability triggers an additional time, it should. Put them... Huh, Alright. We have three Vron, so all we need is for a guy to die. That's all... <laughs> that is all we need, man. <laughs> Let's get in. They will... They have to let him in, right? Do you have the fourth anoint? Do you have another anoint? I swear to God. No, they serum snare. Okay. Serum schneer. <laughs> we proliferate. We go seven. Dude, we're gonna die. <laughs> it's gonna happen. We are so close to it. We get a turn, we might be able to pull it off. Oh no. Oh no, they're attacking. Oh no. These other two cards in their hand need to be cards that put poison counters on us. Either that or they draw into more poison stuff. There's a poison counter. Oh no. Oh no, dude. They got it too. That I mean, it had to be Augury because it helps them get... The other thing that gives us a poison counter. Yeah, good game. Good game, opponent. Cheese. Always one turn away! <laughs> Always one turn away, man. Oh. Always. Always one turn away. And yeah, I, saw, I, saw, I knew people were going to suggest this. I see people in chat saying that you could use the Skrelv to drop an enchantment from one of these creatures. You cannot. I don't think it works that way. It gives Hexproof from a color, not protection. So I don't think it drops uh, enchantments and ours that are already on the thing. I don't think it works that way. Oh, man. Oh, blue-black poison. Oh, blue-black poison. That was a good game, though. We go first, and we're in yet another situation where Skrelv and Shattered Sanctum show up in the opening hand. They've been doing that to us a lot tonight. This is the third separate time. And we never get another untapped white source either. So, Arena up to its tricks. And we can see that. 
You just have to, you know, just have to roll with it. That's how it works. Somebody mentioned um, Takassia's Welcome. Uh, I will say, I think, um, yeah, Welcoming Vamp is just better. Because it's a creature, you know, it, it activates um, dice triggers. And I just, it could, I think that's better. <laughs> it's, you know, <laughs> if you play it on curve after Vron, it can die and get you a Vron triggers. <laughs> Fourth venerated Rod Priest of the night. <laughs> Let's just take you out while we can. Actually, I think that's technically the fifth or sixth of the night because we played against three earlier and then two more and then another one just now. So, yeah. <laughs> People love this deck. They are loath to give it up. I think in the first like three days of the season, this deck is posted like a 43% win rate, though. So I wouldn't expect to see it forever. I really wouldn't. You want to tilt him? I, I wonder if this does it. Let's, uh, Skrelf. Let's ride of Oblivion. <laughs> this is not something that I would always suggest doing, but I'm doing it this time. Yeah, they don't have anything after that. So... Hmm. I could just say go here. It's probably correct. So in the turn, Emperor. If we have to ride of Oblivion next turn, I'd rather have an Emperor token than a Ratadabric. Yeah. Ratadrabic. It's so hard. It, why, his name should not be Ratadrabic. <laughs> All right. So apparently we can't activate our Planeswalker for some reason. Why is that? Okay. Cool. <laughs> let's make let's make a one two two. Guards, to me. Edgar, Crim de la Crim a la Edgar, huh? Well, I think against this deck, we just want to keep putting dudes on the table, so... Always use your Planeswalker ability first when you can, because if you don't, then they'll kill your Planeswalker <laughs> when you go to do something else. They have something. They do. Alright, let's continue to see if we can get them to spend mana here. Pop in. For a chat. Alright, put them at 18. They have the rice ball, the Onigiri um, avatar, and this I want this so bad. <laughs> I want Onigiri, er, uh, Onigiri avatar like tomorrow. They Atara the Edgar. That's fine. It's <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> Still put enough value on the table, but they can catch back up, but they don't. They won't. They don't. They don't. All you gotta do is remove the guys. Just remove the guys, man. We go first, and look at this hand. I'm keeping it. <laughs> I really shouldn't. It's a bad idea. We call this a bad idea. But let's see what we can do against Dr. Moose. It's <laughs> a great name. Is this the deck again? Are you going to play? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> lordy, lordy. I'm turning 40. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> ah, <laughs> tell us, Okor, I guess. I should have played Vron because I can lose those. Like, I can lose those to a weird block or something. But I can't really lose the one copy of Ilkor that I have. But we'll see, dude. We'll see. Draw the third land deck. Draw the third land. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> oh, man. Rod Priest. We played against Rod Priest so many times tonight, man. Kind of over it. <laughs> if they pop in, they have Shore up. It's like 100 that they have shore up if they come in. Unless it's all a bluff. No. It was all a bluff. Ooh, we got cut down. But we didn't draw the land because, you know, screw us, right? <laughs> now, there's a fun way to make this work. That did hang. That hung. So they have something. All right, let's try something. Let's try this. Let's pop in and see if they can't resist. Let's see if they just cannot help themselves. Come on, Doctor. Doctor Moose does not make the call there. Mm, okay, that's fine. Put him at seventeen. It's not time to pull the trigger on cut down yet. It's just not. It isn't. I promise you. All right, can we do this? Can we somehow do this? You know, like just with two mana. A cut down and a bunch of runs. Like, is it? Oh, they're gonna do something. 
Oh, 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 Let's cut it down. Cut it down, buddy. We do end up with po two poison off of that, but like, I do not care. You do not pass go. You do not get to march it back out. Let's go. I'll walk it out. We that's the that's that's good. That's good. That's good position. <laughs> they could always Ivy or play another Rob Priest this turn, and that would like suck a little, but it wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, here comes Ivy. The beans are cool. Cut down. <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. We're never gonna draw the land though. Never, never. Well, let's see if they have shore up or something now. I should have done this EOT, because they'd have fallen into the same trap. I guarantee they can't help themselves. They cannot help themselves, dude. Yeah, they have shore up. Okay. Can I... You control. Okay, that would... <laughs> if I could somehow, like, scrub their own their ivy to give it protection from blue, or, like, hexproof from blue, that would be the sickest thing <laughs> of all time, but I can't do that. Okay. They're blue green. <laughs> so they're blue green. They don't have it. You know what I mean? Uh, blue. Swing. Can't be blocked. They get a poison. Look at that. Alright, we still haven't drawn lands, but it's kind of been okay a little bit. Alright, they drop land. They have two cards in their hand. Here comes the, here they come with Ivy. What else are you gonna do? Nothing. We draw the land. So let's attempt to Vron. Let us attempt to Vron. Yeah, all right. Sick, sick beans. Good-ish. Let's try to get him with Elis, but never Skrelv. Almost never Skrelv in this point in the game. All right, opponent goes to eleven. They they could still have cards though. They they could really still get cards. It is not unheard of. Dr. Moose with a venerated Rob Priest. You little stinker. <laughs> <sighs> Opponent does always. These these decks tend to get multiple Rob Priests. For some reason, just Arena knows, you know, to give you those. Pass. My turn. Land. Wandering Emperor. See if they walk into it. They're not wall you know, okay. Honestly, I mm, that wasn't the best. That was not the best attack, but we had Skrelv. We had Skrelv, so it's kind of okay. To go to four if we do this. Oh, and then three, two, one, right? Oh, they could almost die. They're so close to dying. But I'd rather do this a different way. Let's end the turn. See what they do. See what they do. Because they don't die. That's the problem, is they can't straight up die this turn. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. They go to one. Making sure my math is good, and it is. If we cast both these rounds, they'll go to one. But they could disrupt that. They could disrupt it with a fading hope or a march of swirling mists. Which I don't want to give them a reason to use. High Vars stand, huh? Do you have a card in your hand? I actually think this is a weird call, guys, but I think now might be a good time to use this Wandering Emperor. I really do. Before they draw another card and stuff. Sure, man. I'm just gonna do it. I know this looks super weird, guys. I, d I know. But they're more tapped down and have fewer cards in their hand than they will for like the rest of the game at this point because if they don't kill us this turn we basically get to next turn like guaranteed right so let's we could also try to kill this ivy we could try to kill this ivy right now this is a, such a hard decision that last card has to also be protection spell let's see if it is if it is we get it out of their hand so there's that so we would end up going up to a million they march they march 
But the last card in the hand was March. That sucks, though. That does suck a little. But now, um, the tie bar stand won't... Yeah, it didn't go all the way off, so that's good. Five, we go up to, like, seven, eight poison counters this turn, and they can't kill us. From what I can tell, so... I think we might be okay. There's something we could have done differently. Like, I feel, I feel like I missed a big trick there. I do, and maybe it was playing the Wandering Emperor off timing, but that actually was, I think, a good idea. I think doing that was correct. Alright, so they kill Emperor with Ivy. Rob Priest puts us at 6 poison. But they are in a ton of trouble. I mean, they're tapped out. Did you draw a march? Did you draw a march of swirling mists? Did that happen? Maybe they just think they're not dead. You know what I mean? Because they go to one on this board. To their knowledge. They have something. That, that spell is castable. <sighs> Please don't let it be March. It's not. Okay. So they go to two. Here's Vron. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's hanging. It's hanging with Mr. Cooper up there. Dr. Moose, what do you have? Oh my goodness. I care about you, caribou. They tie our stand. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's not so bad. So we'll go up to eight poison. Right? Seven, eight. Oh my god. Eight. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Choose to keep this one out. Triggers happen. They die. Good game. Oh my god. Could it be any more stressful? <laughs>